Welcome to Friday's Reflections. If you think you can hear the sound of thunder, you can't. It's the kittens hurtling around at 90 miles an hour. Still not allowed out yet. It'll be a few weeks yet. They're booked in to be spayed and they can't go out until they're spayed. I hope you've had a, a really good week. I had my daughter and my grandchildren staying for a week and they went home yesterday and we had a really great week. We managed to do all the things that we, we hoped to do. And as usual, the things that we loved the most were the things that are simple and, and timeless. Um, Shaquille has a, a fishing net and it's the first time we'd uh, taken it out to use it. And we went to the Mimram and um, at Pansanger Park and, and there's a little area where you can go in and you can... Um, fish but there was nothing he could only get stones no fish no larvae in that particular bit but he then he then used his net and he managed to catch not just one but three damselflies the common damselflies which are beautiful and um they weren't they were per perfectly okay because it's just one of those little soft nets and and then one of the damselflies alighted on his hand and he was so thrilled and I'm I'm hoping that's the beginning of a journey of discovery of of insects and the wonders of the insect world for him and on that day I think he must have walked around about I don't know seven or eight miles with very little complaining we had a picnic and we stopped at various points but he really does seem to have a lot of stamina and it was a, just such a brilliant day and Elise was still small enough to be in the buggy so he got lots of exercise pushing her around. And, you know, those simple pleasures in life are, really strike a chord with me at the moment as everything seems to be pointing to recession and there's all the energy prices and everything else going on and it seems to me we're going to have to live our lives differently um, and, and that's going to be hard and it'll be really hard for some people because I know when they talked about the energy prices rising there was some talk that they thought that this winter people may well die because they can't afford to heat their homes and that's in this country where we're not really used, used to that um, and that's quite an alarming thought isn't it and then it made me think of of the importance of living in community. And then it made me think of the early church in the book of Acts. And the scripture I want to share with you, as all the kittens are going again, is, um, is from Acts 2. And it's from verse 43 to verse 47. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And it's a lovely, it's a lovely image, isn't it? That, that the, the apostles going around and obviously healing taking place and miracles. But that wonderful uh, sense of looking out for each other, of, of sharing what they had. And it seems to me that the more... The more you have, the harder it is to share. And you, you know from when you have a child, you know those first lessons of teaching children to share and how naturally we don't really want to share. And yet, 
when you do, you feel so much better for it. And it, it reminds me of a, a few things really. This is a, this, it seems a bit trivial, but it, it, it's a lovely memory. Um, I, I've made some, some Cornish pasties and I've made two and they were really lovely and I chopped all the little vegetables into tiny fine cubes and everything had been sauteed and seasoned and flavoured and the pastry had been made and, and I, I'm not very good at crimping, I, I'm, I, I love cooking, I'm passionate about cooking but my crimping skills leave much to be desired and Sarah crimped these, these pasties so we baked them, we were really looking forward to them and out they came in the oven and we we started to eat them and the doorbell rang. I thought, oh, who's that? I wonder. And I opened the door and it was a much loved, much loved friend. And um, he just popped round and I thought, I know, I just know we have to share this, this food with him. And and part of me was, oh, I really wanted, was looking forward to eating all of it. But the other half of me knew that I, I had to do that. And the really strange thing is that in sharing it, what I had tasted so much better and actually was enough. And we live in such strange times, don't we? We have so much. I can remember my home was a as a child and we weren't poor we weren't rich but we were very comfortable but if i look at the possessions that we have now compared to what people had then if i look at the way we live today i mean i can think of christmas and uh, christmas was just the, the, the the meal on Christmas, that was the one and only meal that was special and different. And then that turkey lasted for I don't know how long and everything possible was made from that turkey. Soup, stock, you name it. Everything. And and I look at how we, we've we've changed and you, you have, you know, you plan menus for a whole kind of almost a week of celebrating and and you know, that can be fine at times, but sometimes it can become a bit excessive and, and actually, without realising it, greedy. And we all know there's enough food in the world for no one to starve, and yet people do starve. And I wonder whether this kind of energy crisis and this uh, the war in the Ukraine and all these dark things are, uh, are going to be used by God to, to help us to live in a better way. And I don't mean he sent those things, that's not what I mean. But, um, you know, people have free will and people start wars, but God can work through all kinds of situations, all kinds of chaos and mess and darkness, and he can bring really worthwhile things out of it. If I look back at at COVID and um, and think about the, how hard it was in one sense, but what were the blessings that came from it? And I think for me, it was realizing the importance of, of people, that actually the only thing that mattered was people. Um, and I loved that bit of being out and everybody seemed to, to need a, a, a kind word or wanted to speak. Whereas before, you might just say a hello or some pleasantry, but there, there seemed to be an increased desire for communication. There was time for dads to be with their family. I loved seeing dads out with their kids on bike rides and over in the fields, a dad had set up a tennis net and was playing with the children. And, uh, and that, that was wonderful. And you learned to be resilient, didn't you? And to live with disappointment. You came out of lockdown, you went back in. All of, all of that stuff. And you, you also learned to appreciate the area in which you lived. Instead of going on holiday to discover new things, I really got to know um, more of the area in which I live and how truly and utterly beautiful it was and how actually I took it for granted and I didn't approach a walk here the same way as I would if I was on holiday. Well, how daft is that? And, 
And I, I think in some senses, and this sounds really strange, the quality of my life increased. And although it was terrible not seeing my family, and awful, and I lost my mum at that time, she died from dementia and I couldn't visit her, couldn't Zoom. It was absolutely awful. But since then, the... Um, I think I don't, I, I, I took my family for granted. I wasn't really aware of it, but I'm so grateful for any time spent with my daughter and my grandchildren and going up to see my sister and uh, spending time with her and, and just realizing that all these things over the past, I, my life really, I've taken for granted. And my life had been relatively easy in terms of what I had to live through. There'd been no no real wars on this soil. There were some uh, terrorist attacks, the IRA, when I was little in London or teenager in London. But, but nothing really, nothing awful. And I'd almost taken that peace and calmness and for, for granted. And it's really interesting, isn't it? Because it really does seem as if the seasons are changing. And I wonder what we can learn through this period, through a recession. We've seen other recessions. I can remember the three-day week and all of all of that stuff and, and the minor strike and all those, those things that we've been through. And um, what I want to see this time, though, is I want to see how I can be of use to people in the community? How, have I got something I can share? How can I help my neighbors? How can I help those who are, who are in need? It might be a meal. It might be something I, I have that I don't want any longer, that instead of taking to a charity shop, I can actually give to somebody who I know needs it. And, um, and that's really what I want, wanted to share with you this week, that I'm really, would like that same spirit of generosity that was on the believers that, that in the early early days of the church how they were so um, concerned with each other's needs each other's needs to prefer that's a lovely line that isn't it um, so I, I, I want to leave you with that thought and it you know God has promised never to leave us so no matter how how difficult or challenging this next season of life is. He will be with us and, and he will teach us if we allow ourselves to be taught. Um, perhaps not just how to get through this time, but how, how to prosper. And I don't mean prospering by making money. I mean, prosper by living well and living for others. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to end in prayer. And I really hope in some small way I've inspired you to, to not be fearful of, of what's ahead, but to take heart and to know that God is with you and will teach, will teach us many things. I always, always believe that God longs to teach more than we long to learn. So let me end in prayer and as usual, please add your Amen. Lord God Almighty, we thank you so much for the gift of, of this day for the gift of this season. We thank you for your promises, Lord, not one of them broken. We thank you for good times. And we thank you for what you'll teach us in bad times, Lord, and hard times. And Lord, as the world seems to be rocking I don't know, ever more precariously towards a recession. We just ask, Lord, that um, you would guide us and believers across the world to, to live wisely and to live well, looking out for those in the community who, who need help, whether that's practical help, whether it's food or clothes or household items or whether it's encouragement or just time spent or whether it's an invitation into your home uh, during the winter when when heating is going to be so expensive lord may we be a people who open not just our homes to those in need but our, the church buildings lord and um, would your light shine ever brighter during this this coming season and uh, protect us, Lord, and 
Give us your wisdom and help us to trust in you and lean not on our own understanding, Lord. We just pray for all the nations in the world, Lord, because if we're going to struggle here in the West, how much worse must it be for those who are in poverty in the third world? We cry out to you to have mercy on them. Give us hearts, Lord, not just for those in our own nation, but those across the nations who need, who need help, Lord, and a more just society. And we offer up our prayers, not in any strength of our own, but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, name above all names. Well, I hope you have a really good weekend. I don't know what you're doing. I'm, I'm preaching on, on Sunday morning and I always get really, um, not exactly fearful, but, but on edge and... I can't fully relax and I, I've got all, everything prepared but I always have this oh, what if and then I think I, I shouldn't be like that. I believe God's given me a message and I just have to share that message and the rest is, is his work not mine. So maybe you're, you, you're at a loose end on Sunday morning and you, you, you don't come to church but you might. Do come to Pan's Hanger, it's 10 o'clock, it's the cafe style church, so it's um, very uh, informal in a sense, it's not, it's not the traditional kind of service and you are so welcome, whether you've been coming to church for years or whether, you, whether you've never set foot in a church, you are so very welcome, whoever you are, you are welcome. So maybe see you then, but if not, have a great weekend anyway. See you next week.